Good evening folks, I'm James Donnelly, joined tonight here by Gary Riley at Longford Town's training session on this Monday evening. Uh, we're going to look ahead to Friday's game away to Derry at the Brandywell. It's been a week since Longford have had a game, they've had a, a bit of time off to recuperate from that great win over Dundalk at Bishop's Gate. So we look back at that first. Gary, a massive night for the club and the team. You know, it was a long time coming, we all knew it. Um, you know, it's not really affected the table too much, obviously. But in terms of morale and confidence, that must have been a, a, a big win. Yeah, I think um, I think some of the players are. I think Lee actually said it on on social media after that. It was a long time coming, and I think uh, the players maybe thought that they were very very close to that that win. And even like I say, t- talking talking outside outside of anything, you might think Jesus, that win could have come a few months ago. There was a lot of games there where you look at points that were left on the pitch, or no points at all coming off the pitch really disappointing but the, the performances were there and we were always saying she's not that far away so I suppose while we would have liked it a bit earlier and would have certainly helped the position that we're in at the moment I think it's great to get the three points and get the win and go we actually were there's an element that we should be here um, and I know the table mightn't reflect that at the moment but there is a lot of positivity that can be brought in from a win um, you can look across the ga- bunch of games before that some maybe not great performances some really good performances where nothing came out of it and now three points on the board uh, against a huge team like Dundalk is always a positive the game itself you know obviously we went 1-0 up just before half time uh, thanks to a good header from Aaron O'Driscoll mm. the game changed in the second half quite dramatically two sending off yeah. for Longford a sending off for Dundalk but for a while there Longford were a man down second man down it looked like the tables were turning against us again that little bit of luck seemed to be escaping our grasp again but the team showed real grit and determination to hold out against yeah. the numbers. Obviously, the knock at the man sent off in the last minute, but you know you're not going to really count that. No. There was excuses made on their half. The pitch was rubbish. All this crap. Uh, you know, they had extra men. They were bombarding us with attacks, but they yeah. couldn't break through. Yeah, that that that's the real thing about it. Like if you look at the time Ar- um, Aaron Robinson was sent off. Uh, I think it was the 58 minute. That, that's a 30 minute pro uh, time period that Dundalk had with a man advantage, um, which is just a huge advantage, particularly when you look at the Dundalk's position at the table. You know they're not happy where they are. They expect to be much higher up the table, and there was a lot of pressure on them, and that goes to show that while there was a lot of pressure on them, it put a lot of pressure on the 10 remaining fellas on the pitch, and then there was another sending off um, with 10 minutes to go. So a huge amount of pressure was left on a very few number of players that's what you might expect but they held us strong some great defending I think Lee only had to make one save so it really goes to show that Lee was well protected the, the box was well protected Dundalk couldn't create any chances and they had a lot of attacking uh, prowess on the pitch very reg- uh, regular starters for the club and they couldn't break them down um, I have to really question um, what, what was being said about the pitch I have <laughs> absolutely no idea what they were talking about we were there uh, the whole day and we are walking across the pitch looking at it great Nick um, so I can't really comment on that um, it seems to be no matter what pitch they're playing on there's something wrong with the pitch I think there's a comment made about it the weekend uh, <laughs> up in Finn Harp so I don't really know where that's coming from but look the, the, you'll have that and I suppose excuses can't have to be made when you cannot break down nine men uh, coming to the end of the game with such pressure on the opposition so you have to hand it to the boys you know they're working hard here now and you know I'm sure they're feeling really positive uh, looking forward to Friday we'll just throw back to your comment about Lee only having to make one save mm. but it was a quite, quite a brilliant save in the last few minutes of the game mm. you know a snapshot header he got the hand up as quick as he could yeah. and tipped it out over the bar only for him that was a 1-1 game yeah. and we were looking at going away with our heads down again yeah that, that's really it like if you look back at the video it, it was such a you know the player that was coming in three or four yards away and he got his nut on it and he made the save a pure great reaction save and that goes to show you know I used to play keeper back in the day not very much or not very well but Lee didn't have too much to do throughout the whole game and this is an injury time of 90 minutes when Longford were under pressure for for most of the game and he still had to keep concentration and focus coming into the last injury time you may look at uh, other games this season where we've conceded very late goals and that was really disappointing but that was a huge bit of relief and positivity for the team because we were able to go right we held it out we were under serious pressure like the most pressure we've been on in any game that we might have conceded but they held out got it over the line and took three points out of it yeah because I think it is important to focus on the fact that you know there was two sendings off mm. the second sending off came in the 75th minute that was a good 15 minutes we were two men down you know you can say what you want about the pitch and, and 
opportunities and all this sort of stuff but when you have two man extra you know you have to be making yeah, you had to that opportunity and they didn't be, and it yeah. wasn't a thing of you know they weren't they didn't turn up mm. it was Longford's pure grit that kept them out yeah th- there was no doubt about it there was a lot of grit in that game um, and a lot of teamwork you know there was a lot of lads fighting for their teammates which is just wonderful to see considering this, we're late, this late in the season um, they're fighting for each other uh, covering each other covering extra ground and everyone had to cover extra ground considering there was only nine of them on the pitch so there was a lot of positivity there and you know yeah you, you can say that Dundalk probably mightn't have performed as well as they might have hoped but they weren't allowed to perform if you look back at the game you look at Cleary and and Boyle passing around the halfway line under causing no problems for Longford Town because because it couldn't be broken down and um, so there's real great positivity uh, in the team and of course Arno just get, get, getting a goal um, great performance from him again and it's good to get his note on it yeah and speaking about Aaron Odiska scoring that goal mm. afterwards Johnny Martin said to me you know they felt that Aaron has that in him you know mm. they feel he could probably get maybe one or two more headers uh, before the end of the season and mm. we've seen it already he scored I think against Bangor oh, don't, don't, don't restrict him to headers either well, uh, 30 yard screamers is more than welcome as well that, that's what I mean <laughs> they, they, ha- they reckon he has that in him to get yeah. forward when he needs to and, and get an important goal he did that in Bangor he did it again against mm. uh, uh, Dundalk so it shows that uh, as great as a defender he is, he does have that little bit of edge going forward too. Uh, no doubt about it. And you also have to highlight Dylan Grimes knocked that ball into, uh, particularly where we were in the gantry, you could see it right down, yeah. a beautiful angle from where we were, you could see it right down the channel where the ball went in and he couldn't have put it in a better position, obviously because he scored. But even if we didn't score, it was such a great ball in, it caused so much problem, so many problems for Dundalk, they, could, they couldn't deal with it. And it just got, got his out in front and forced the mistake out of the keeper and it went in. Um, couldn't really ask for more, um, except hopefully we'll do it next week and I'm and looking forward to Friday. That game has come and gone now, you know, it's been a, a week and a bit since our last game. They've had a time to knuckle down and prepare for this match on Friday. Yeah. Our matches against Derry this week have been, or this year have been a mixed bag, you know, the opening night of the season, a great night, 2-0 win, you know, we were laughing. Away to Derry uh, back in May, we were 1-0 up, we were laughing again until the very last kick of the game. Yeah. They scored the equaliser, they were laughing. The last game in Bishop's Gate, only Derry was laughing leaving that game. Uh, it was a 3-0 uh, victory for, for the Candy Stripes. But, you know, that last game isn't going to reflect how things have been between the teams. Obviously, Rory Higgins has come in and, and kind of nearly changed the dynamic completely in that squad. Yes. But, you know, the dynamic has been changed with Longford this week with that win and the confidence. And in fairness, the lads are confident every week. You can't give that about them. But the confidence will be that bit extra more going away to the Brandywell this Friday because they've played in the Brandywell already we probably should have won the game overall the 90 minutes last kick of the game they equalised they'll go into that game on Friday with you know no fears not worried about what's going on outside of that they'll be fully focused and, and looking for the win yeah 100% like if, if you look at that Derry team it's still a lot of the same players that didn't have a great start this season now you have to have this Roy Higgins he's done a great job since he's come in he's made, a, made some changes he's brought a couple of players in it'll probably real job for him will be next season um, but so he's making do with what he has at the moment and he's done really well you have to hand it to him they've shot up the table you know if we were looking at the start of the, ta- a start of the year they were probably going to be down the bottom but they made the right changes they brought the right people in and well it's not great to see Declan Devine he's a great League of Ireland man uh, out of the game at the moment he has Laurie Higgins has made great changes and as you said changes the dynamic of the team when we were up in, the, in Derry the last time, uh, uh, I think it was a media person said that um, there was maybe a lot, not a lot of players there that were real Derry players. I don't think that person can say the same right now. Mm. They've changed what they're doing. They're a far more attacking, more positive, more confident team. And, as, and we saw that when they played in Bishopsgate. But if you look back up in the Brandywell and they're playing on an AstroTurf pitch, if that wasn't an AstroTurf pitch, that, you know, that player wouldn't have got that ball. Yeah. The mad spin got that equaliser um, for Derry and you know, they were lucky to get that draw in the end but I think Longford have come probably a long way they probably had a few heavy defeats um, in the time that, that we lost to Derry at home and I think that kind of not that the boys needed waking up it was just like probably a bit more of a it still was a bit of a wake up call they're still you know what 24 points to play for Dundalk aren't looking too well there's a lot of, there's an opportunity there for, for Longford to get out of the position they're in and they just have to look to Friday and go, we can do this. We had a great game up here. Rohegans was in charge of that game. 
Longford Town did very well and Rob Manley scored a beautiful goal that night worked really hard great ball in by Dean Zambra and opened them up with ease mm. if Longford play with the same confidence with the same heart and the same teamwork that they did last Saturday I've absolutely no doubt that they can get three points on Friday the big talking point about Friday I suppose for Longford is that we're going to be missing two key men in Rob Manley and Aaron Robinson um, you know there's a debate over amongst ourselves whether Robbo's second yellow is justified uh, Rob Manley's no way you know we, we'll go on record and say that yeah. we reckon it should have been a red card at all but look he's out of game Robbo's out of game there's a chance there for someone to come in now and, and possibly uh, put in a bit of a competition for the spot certainly yeah like, like there's always been competition in the team you know Rob probably started up front more so this season Dean Williams has come in and while Rob might feel agreed, might prefer to play up front he's been doing unbelievable work out the right uh, really disciplined um, in not as natural position really disciplined covering uh, the right back position as well helping out the right back in, in defensive positions but still brilliant going forward his ball control as we've seen this season and last season is brilliant he makes defenders work extremely hard uh, to get the ball off him and he can still drive into the box I think um, on f- while we will miss Rob on Friday there is an opportunity there for maybe a player that would would like to have played a bit more this season there's definitely an opportunity there for, for them to go don't forget about me I'm still here I can offer something to this team and there's no better opportunity than Friday night just looking at who could slot in possibly you know you have the likes of Dean Moore who plays out on the left he could switch mm. over to the right you could possibly have Callum Moorfield go in in Rob's place they're of similar stature you know similar yep. physique as well and Callum does have a bit of speed on him when he gets going does. Um, but there's also the likes of Dylan Grimes who could switch you have uh, Connor Davis looking to come in there as well just on the fringes and, and even young Aaron McCabe could get a look in you wouldn't know yeah, Dara has a lot of options there, and that's a great thing to have. Like we're we're not um, suffering too bad with injuries at the moment, so there there could be a number of changes made. Um, po- possibly even maybe the like of Aaron McNally. He's a left wing, left back, left yeah. wing back. He could show up on the right. We saw that the ability he has going forward is unbelievable. He's played on the right once this year against Dundalk away, and he got a goal from. He got the position. goal, yeah, and you know that was really great to see. And but he has the ability to do it. We saw it again in Waterford uh, in Bishopsgate this season. Blitz two past two players and slotted in, just passed it in past the keeper. He has that ability. He has the pace. He has the confidence. He could do a huge job on the right hand side. And that's not to say that there isn't another player there that might be naturally there, uh, as he mentioned, like a uh, uh, Aaron McCabe there's a lot of opportunity there and unfortunately you know, while it's not great that we've had two players sent off and, and out of action for their, for Friday there's still opportunity there and while it's not great for the team individuals have to look and go this is a great opportunity for me and I can impress every game for the last while now has been a must win for this team mm. and for Dara what do you think he'll be telling the lads this week you know after picking up the, the win the, the long awaited win last week yeah. what do you think he'll be telling the lads going into Friday I, I think it's a, there isn't going to be that much of a change to be honest I think it's, there's definitely more he can say about you know positivity but I we can't really say that the players have been out of too many games this season um, you, you probably look at the only real two games might have been the two draw of the games in, in the first part of the season um, not not great performances and not great results either maybe the Bowes game at home as well there have been probably three worst performances uh, that Longford have put in this year and while the points return don't show it, doesn't show it, the performance have been there. So I think there won't be that much change as to what Dara is going to say as regards performance. It's probably going to be more of a mental thing. We can beat teams in, in this league. We've beaten Dundalk, one of the biggest teams in the, in the league. The country. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, while we all know they're not doing great at the moment, still Dundalk, still a huge amount of players, um, well-experienced manager, well-known around Dundalk. And you know, they have, you know, they got to a cup final last year, the bones of that team. So, they're still in the cup as well. They're still in the cup as well. So you know, well, just about. Um, <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see tomorrow night. But I think um, you know, while they're, they're probably be saying the same thing, probably in just a slightly different frame. We we beaten Dundalk. We held strong. There's a lot that can be taken apart from the result. The real together performance that they put in, strong defensively, decent going forward. Probably didn't create as many chances as we would have liked, particularly in the second half. But we had nine men. So. There's not to be taken from it, and uh, but overall, I don't think Dar would be saying too much different than uh, what he would have if that result didn't come. Thanks very much, Gary. That'll do us for tonight. We'll see you all on Friday in the Brandywell, and it'll be live on LOI TV with a kickoff time of 7:45 p.m.